Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Microsoft Orleans. In this video, we're going to take a look at grain interceptors or grain filters. And these are things we can use to intercept a call to and from a grain and add some functionality around that. They're really powerful. And in this video, we'll go through how we use them, how we set them up, how they work, and also run through an example in our banking application, practical example of how we want to use them. If you're enjoying this series on Microsoft Orleans, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you get updated on the latest videos in the series and like the video as well. Grain filters give our application an opportunity to intercept grain calls. This means that anytime a grain calls another grain or a client calls a grain, we have the opportunity to execute some code before or after the grain call. This code can basically do whatever the application developer wants, including modifying the request context or even the return value of a method being called. This sort of functionality can be really useful in scenarios like logging or authorization where we want to do something before or after we call a grain. So in our scenario, let's say we have our two grains, our bank account grain and our ATM grain. And as usual, the bank account calls the ATM to do some work. It waits for the response and the ATM returns that. The first place where we can add a grain filter or an incoming grain filter is on the request from the bank account to the ATM. We can also add a grain filter during the response phase. So an outgo grain filter. Additionally, it doesn't have to be just on grain to grain calls. We can also make these calls when using an Orleans client like we have in our application where we call an Orleans silo directly from ASP.NET using the Orleans client. So let's talk a little bit now about how we actually add these grain call filters and how we register them and how many we can use and what order they execute in. So let's say in our example, we have a login grain filter and we have an auth grain filter. The login grain filter represented by the red triangle while the auth grain filter is represented by the yellow triangle. And we also have two silos. One silo has a number of different grains on it, a green and two oranges, while the other one just has two green grains. And let's say we decide to add a grain filter to our green grains. This is something that Orleans support. We can say we want this filter to run on just this grain type. But another thing we can do is we can say, I want every grain on this silo to use this grain filter. So in our case, we have the yellow grain, the alt grain filter as part registered as part of the grain itself, while we have the login grain filter as part of the silo. So what does this mean? This essentially means that in the case of the green grain on the silo on the left, it will first hit the login grain filter because that is registered in the silo and we hit the order of register for the silo before the filter is registered on the grain. And then once that's executed, it will go on ahead and execute the next filter in the chain, which in this case is the yellow auth grain filter. So we can see here that this green grain is actually hitting both of the filters we've added. One because it's registered on the grain and the other because it's registered on the silo. And we could also, in a more complicated use case, we could register multiple filters on a grain or multiple filters on a silo, and they would all be executed in the order that we register them. So in the other examples in our orange grain, this is obviously just going to hit the red login grain filter because that's the only thing registered on the silo and there is nothing registered specifically for that grain type. And then on the other silo, so the two other green grains on the right, there's nothing registered on this silo. So they're just going to hit the yellow auth grain filter that is registered for that grain type. So that's basically it for the theory around grain filters. It's pretty straightforward, but they're very powerful to use. So let's jump into the code base and take a look at how we can actually use these in our application. All right, so we've jumped over to Visual Studio and we're in our banking application. So let's go ahead and add a couple of different filters here to just demonstrate how we want to add some logging in our application every time a client calls a grain or every time grains call each other. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into our grains project and we're going to add another folder and we're just going to call it filters. So let's add that. And this is where we're going to add some of our filters. 
So let's add a logging incoming grain call filter. Let's create a new class and we'll just simply call it exactly what we said. So logging incoming grain call filter. And what we want to do here to make this a filter that we're using is we want to implement the interface I incoming grain call filter. So I incoming grain call filter. Perfect. And we want to make it public as well. We don't need to add any packages to use filters. They're in the core Orleans packages already. So let's go ahead and implement that interface and we'll add a quick constructor using uh, the shortcut. And what we want to do is we just want to inject a logger here so we can log to the console. So I logger and the generic type of the class, call that logger, and we'll add a private variable to store it for this logger. Perfect. So in our constructor, we're just injecting a logger that we're going to use. And as we said in the intro, we could also inject other things here to do anything really to call external databases to even call other grains by injecting a grain client. So let's go ahead and just use our logger and we'll just log something here. So we'll say logger log information and we'll just say something really simple like incoming silo grain filter because we're going to register this as a silo filter. And received grain call on and we'll just use some of the values that are available to us in the context let's say context and we need to add a dollar sign context grain to and the method context method name method I'll just add some quote marks around these to make sure it's easy to see and read So incoming silo grain filter received grain call on this grain to this method name. Perfect. And you can see that this is a red squiggly, something wrong here. And we need to make sure that we call invoke in this invoke method. We need to say context invoke to pass to the next filter or to pass to the grain itself. We'll just do await context dot invoke. And that's essentially all we need to do for our incoming grain call filter. Let's remove some of these usings. We could also, if we wanted to, use this context to modify the request context. So we could essentially say context dot request, and we can say something like set argument, which will allow us to set an argument on the request context. We're not going to do that here, but you have a lot of power over what you want to do with these filters. So let's say we created a incoming grain call filter. Next, let's create an outgoing grain call filter. So again, in our filters folder here, we'll just create a logging outgoing grain call filter. And this is more or less the exact same as how we added the incoming grain call filter. There's not a huge amount of difference here. The main thing is we're just implementing a different interface. So we're implementing I outgoing grain call filter. And we'll make it public. And again, we'll do the exact same thing we did in the previous class. We'll just copy the constructor over and inject the logger. And obviously, we just want to make sure that the names are changed as well. So let's go ahead and implement this interface. And we can see that it has more or less the same signature as the incoming one. The only difference is we have an outgoing grain call context. So we need to do more or less the same thing. We'll just log and then we'll return to the next filter in the chain. Make that async. And instead of saying incoming silo grain filter, we'll say outgoing. Perfect. So that's our two grain filters created. Now these haven't been registered anywhere. No actual grain is using them or they're not registered with any silo. So let's go ahead and look at how we actually registered these to be used inside our system. So let's jump into our silo here and go into program. And this is where we want to register our incoming grain call filter. So every time a grain on this silo gets called, this grain filter will run. So what we want to do is we want to do silo builder dot incoming grain call filter. We'll use the generic version. And then we just want to add our incoming grain call filter here. So we'll copy the name 
into the generic argument. And that's it registered. Super simple. If we wanted to register multiple ones, we could just do them under here and they would execute in the order that we registered. And the same thing if we wanted to register the outgoing one, we would just say add outgoing grain call filter. But in our case, we're actually going to register the outgoing grain call filter on our client because that's where we want our outgoing calls to log from and our incoming ones to log from the silo. So let's register our outgoing one in our Orleans client. In the program, we can simply do when we're setting up our Orleans client, we can simply write client dot add outgoing grain call filter. And in the same way as we registered the incoming one on the silo, we're going to register the outgoing one on the client. Perfect. So that's our two silo kind of wide grain call filters registered and created. Next, let's have a quick look at how to create one on a grain itself. So let's open up our ATM grain, for instance, and this can be on any grain that we want. It doesn't have to be on an ATM grain. But the first thing we want to do is we want to implement the incoming or outgoing grain call filter interface directly on the grain. So in our case, we're just going to add an incoming one. So we're going to say incoming grain call filter, and we're just going to implement that interface. And one thing I want to do just for this interface is I also want to inject a logger to use here. So we'll say I logger for the ATM grain. And we'll just call that okay, logger. So we're injecting this logger. And we want to use it here. So let's just add a variable to store our logger on the class and we'll assign it from the injected logger. Perfect. So now we can use the logger and we just need to implement the I incoming grain call filter, which should be pretty straightforward. We'll make it async. And again, this can just be implemented in the same way as the other filters. The most important thing is that we just call invoke on the context so we can pass to the next filter in the chain or the grain itself. So let's go to our incoming one and let's copy what we have here and just change the log slightly into our ATM grain. So instead of incoming silo grain filter, we'll call it incoming ATM grain filter, receive grain call on this grain to this method. So now we've registered a outgoing grain call filter on our client, an incoming grain call filter on our silo, and an incoming grain call filter on our ATM grain specifically. That should be everything we need. So let's go ahead and actually make some calls to our system and see what kind of logging we get, what order it gets hit, and what we see when we run these. Okay, so we've successfully started our cluster. And we have Postman open here, and we're just going to use the same calls that we use in the other videos and see what logs out. So we've got our two console windows open as well. At the top, we have our client. So this will show all the log lines that we have on our ASP.NET client, which will mostly be the outgoing grain call filters. And then we also at the bottom have the console for our silo, which will show the incoming grain call filters for the silo itself. And for that ATM filter, we also added specifically for the ATM grain. So let's go ahead and let's just initialize a new checking account. So the same call we had before, localhost slash checking account with an opening balance. And if we send that in, we can see we already see some log lines here. So we can see on our client itself, the outgoing silo grain filter has been called, received grain call on the checking account grain, uh, to the initialize method. Perfect, exactly what we expected. And then if we look at our silo at the bottom, we can see several logs here. So the logging incoming grain call filter gets called several times for initialize. And we can also see some other ones for receive reminders for stuff we probably set up before. Also work with the filters because obviously they use the same message based communication that all actors use. And we can see this prepare and commit one, which is related to the transactions that we've set up. So the most important ones really are the ones we added ourselves that we wanted to talk about is the incoming grain silo filter method on the silo itself and then the outgoing call on the client. So the one we added a specific call for is the ATM. So now let's go ahead and make a call to the initialize ATM method. And again, we have the client on the top and the silo on the bottom. 
So we can see now in our silo, we have two logs. We essentially have a log that says the incoming silo grain filter received a grain call for the ATM grain, but we also now have a log incoming ATM grain filter. So this is the grain filter itself. And the previous one is the silo filter that works on all grains on that silo. And as we discussed in the start of the video, it is the silo ones that get called first in the order they're registered, followed by the grain call filters. So I hope you learned a little bit in this video about grain filters and how they can be used and how they operate and some of the theory behind them. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more videos on Microsoft Orleans, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and hit the notification bell so you get notified of new uploads, both from Microsoft Orleans, but other interesting topics that are applicable to distributed application development.